just when you think things can't get any weirder, they do. They do. We are now hearing accusations. Of course, you got to take them with a grain of salt because they're from somebody who clearly has an agenda against the former president, Mary Trump, his niece. Accusations that it was Jared Kushner who tipped the FBI off about documents that shouldn't be at Mar-a-Lago being there. All that as the former president is under investigation for violations of the Espionage Act and potential obstruction of justice. Oh, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to discuss all of that. Plus, uh, home prices completely out of control. You wonder why the middle class feels so disenfranchised right now. Hello, everyone. Good to have you here. I am Trish Regan. Portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest in precious metals than right now. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. Again, LegacyPMInvestments.com. If you have not downloaded this show on Apple iTunes, and most importantly, subscribe to this show on Apple iTunes. Please do me that favor. Go to Apple iTunes, subscribe to the Trish Regan show. Anyway, let's dig into this because the FBI search warrant, which finally came out as I was insisting it needed to, Look, Americans need to know what the heck is going on here. And as I pointed out before, they're going to need a whole lot more than a quote unquote dossier to go after him this time. The warrant finally came out. And what we learned was that the former president is in, in fact, under investigation for potential obstruction of justice, as well as the Espionage Act violations. His team has pointed out, look, there was nothing in these boxes in these documents that was improper. We've already told you that. Uh, we told you that back in June, his lawyer has insisted. And yet the government is saying, no, 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 there were other things there. Meanwhile, add to this, this layer that Mary Trump is floating, and I'm going to share with you all of this, her conversation actually on a podcast recently where she's suggesting that it was, in fact, his son-in-law that tipped the FBI off. I mean, this is crazy, crazy. So she's appearing on a podcast, and the podcaster said, who benefits most by Donald Trump going to prison? There are so many, and she kind of said, yeah, yeah, there, there, there are she said, I, I want it to be all of them. So just so you understand effectively where she's coming from, she said that we need to look very hard at why Jared got $2 billion. We need to look very hard at why he's been so quiet for so many months now. And we need to think about who, if it, who could also be implicated in this that would need as big a play as turning Donald in in order to get out of trouble or at least to mitigate the trouble they're in. It sounds like somebody in Jared's position. She went on to say, I'm not saying it's Jared, but it could be. So that's quite, quite something to throw out there. And I think you have to understand the bias that she comes to the table with, but it also just points to how complicated all of this is and how there's a a vacuum of information right now. And as Americans are trying to piece this together, there are going to be questions on both sides, right? And this is why this lack of information is so disturbing and frankly crippling to our country and who we are because, you know, and people look at the FBI and they're like, okay, guys, you don't have the best track record given what you did with the uh, intelligence from the other side, right? Hillary Clinton's campaign that had paid for all of that quote unquote intelligence, which turned out to be disinformation, which led to a warrant and spying effectively on an American citizen, Carter Page, who was working on Donald Trump's campaign. So people don't have a lot of faith in the FBI right now. So you got to hope that the FBI sure as heck knew what they were doing and had an actual solid reason for going in to a former president's home. Again, knowing that this is completely unprecedented. And, and, then, and then you get people throwing out these wild, wild theories, trying to say things like, oh, there's nuclear codes that are actually in those documents. Well, in my conversations with intelligence professionals, it, it would be um, quite bizarre, right? Like you don't actually have the codes on a piece of paper in boxes. Um, but you, you may have information 
about people or about countries or maybe some satellite pictures that are interesting to him. Maybe he didn't understand what he was taking. I think you've also got to keep in mind that he left the White House in a hurry. A whole bunch of things may have been shoved into a box, but being sloppy is no excuse either. So again, I get back to let's see what the FBI is really and truly alleging, what they really and truly think is there, and come clean with the American people while not giving out any top secret information. But give us some clue about the magnitude because otherwise people are left doubting the integrity of their institutions. And that is bad for us. That is bad for the United States of America. And uh, frankly, it's something that will play quite conveniently into many conservatives, including Donald Trump's hands, because they will use that to their advantage as, as, by the way, they should. If our government is not willing to tell us what's really going on, then we should all be concerned. I want to turn to inflation because there's an incredible report out that's really pretty sad. It shows you how expensive everything's getting and gotten and how little value your dollars really have in this country. There's a report on home prices. But before we get to that, a quick word from one of our sponsors over at the Association of Mature American Citizens, amac.us slash Regan. That's the handle you need to go to, amac.us slash Regan. Wonderful group. So committed to the social and economic policies that I know you care about, that you know I care about. They are pushing every single day in Washington and all around the country to make sure that America's seniors are not caught in a really bad economic spot, which you know, given the trajectory of inflation, so many American seniors are already in. So do what you can to to help them out. Join forces with them because you can be part of a group that's more than 2 million strong. I think they're up to 2.4 million. And you get all kinds of discounts in the meantime. Everything from cell phone plans to hotels to restaurants to airfare, all of that stuff for just 16 bucks a year. So go to amac.us slash Regan, sign up or renew today. And again, join forces with an organization that is committed to the policies that will make every American's life better. Turning to that inflation report right now on housing, it's out of control. In fact, we're looking at home prices that are up so significantly that Buying a home in America right now is actually the least affordable it's been in 33 years. Average mortgage payments rose to $1,944 in the month of June compared to, oh, in January of last, well, earlier this year, they were $1,297, so rather significant spike. This is all due to higher rates and to record home prices. Kind of a bad combination, right? Because you've got rates going up, which means mortgages are more expensive, all while the housing market is so frothy that everything costs more. So it makes it tough for everyday folks. The National Association of Realtors is reporting this. The U.S. Housing Affordability Index, they measure this affordability. It fell to 98.5 last June, again, the lowest recorded in 33 years. So housing is expensive. What's frustrating and what we all need to be aware of is that those uh, economists, those wonky economists over there at the Federal Reserve that don't seem to think or didn't seem to think forever that inflation was an issue. Remember, just transitory, transitory, nothing to see here. Well, they don't like to look at housing prices in their metrics because they feel that housing is an investment and it's too volatile. And so they discount it. And consequently, I think this is part of the reason why they missed how bad inflation really was and how much it was getting embedded into our everyday economy. It's disappointing because over and over again, you see so many policymakers making the wrong choices on the economic front. And I think they do it for political reasons. I mean, I, I, I would like to think that everybody's after the same thing, that they want to ensure upward mobility and prosperity and, and opportunity for every single American But in actuality, so many of these policies turn out to be really detrimental, really detrimental to the very groups that they're supposedly trying to help. I mean, inflation is one example. Joe Biden came into office promising a better life for the middle class, and yet everything he did resulted in more inflation, along with the Federal Reserve, of course, printing all the money that they did, which created more inflation. Everything they did together caused hardship 
for the middle class in America. And I think back over all the economic policies over the last however many decades, and I, I, I see all of these mistakes over and over and over again. One of them comes to mind when we talk about how there's socioeconomic challenges in this country, specifically among minority groups. Part of the reason for that is that policies were put in place that left groups of Americans at a disadvantage. I mean, think about Johnson's war on poverty. And if you look at what has happened in terms of the split between African Americans and Caucasians in this country and their, their wealth aggregation, you start to see a real disconnect that happened in the late 60s, I would argue, as a result of poor economic policy choices designed theoretically to help, but in fact wound up hurting so many people and, and causing a, a more significant social challenge in this country, right? I mean, think about welfare, for example. You couldn't have a man in the house. How was that helpful? It actually encouraged, it encouraged single parenthood which is not right. Anyway, one of my good friends, Larry Elder, whom I've known for a long time, did a whole movie on this. You may um, have seen it, Uncle Tom 1. He's now got, I say 1 because he's got a new one out, Uncle Tom 2. Uncle Tom 2, it's an eye-opening documentary that really everybody in America should see. It's, it's important stuff, and uh, I, I, I'm impressed by it because it's really a compelling story, a, a brave analysis of the history of black America, the, the true history, including the cultural shift from prosperity that so many people enjoyed in this country, prosperity, integrity, and faith, to its current perceived state of anger, discontent, and victimhood, none of which helps, frankly, anyone. Uncle Tom, too, offers historical footage, photos, correspondence, data, and it reveals really the genuine strides of black America in the 20th century, the deliberate Marxist strategy that created all this racial tension and replaced God with government. I mean, think about that for a second, right? That is not helpful. It is not helpful to the country. There's a lot of politics that went into this. He, he gets into the fall of Black Harlem, which had been a thriving economic community, as well as the demoralization of America for political power. So check this out. Uncle Tom 2 from executive producer Larry Elder and director Justin Malone with Brandon Tatum, Vody Bacham, and Chad O. Jackson. So again, check it out. Uncle Tom 2. It's coming out very soon and uh, you can pre-order it. You can actually pre-order it at SalemNow.com. You can watch the movie on demand or you can buy the DVD. You're going to be able to do that soon. I think you're going to wait a few weeks, but uh, go ahead and, and, and pre-order it today. SalemNow.com. Look, there's a lot of poor choices that we've made as a country. I'm going to get into some more of them tomorrow, including just sort of the social implications of all this and the disastrous effect that they're having on this nation. But don't ever forget, everything comes with consequences. So all of these policy choices that we make, they have an effect on our society overall. It is so important that you pay attention to all this. You try and cut through all the noise. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're listening. If you haven't already... Make sure you go to Apple iTunes and make sure you subscribe to this podcast because I'm here every single day for you, all for free, by the way. I never charge you. We've got some ads and that kind of thing, but it's I never charge you. I want you to be able to access information and truth. So do me that favor. Go and subscribe to the podcast today and I'll see you right back here tomorrow.